Uh, yeah, that lasted, okay? Or, 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 or working out or exercising or, or I'm going to start keeping better, better touch with my relatives who are far away. I'm going to do all these things. And, you know, was, uh, those who study these things, I don't know who they are. So anyway, it was online, must be true. Uh, this happens like 92% of the time, that's what they say, that we start things and we don't finish it. So if, if that's your experience, um, as it has been my experience, sometimes um, you're not alone, okay? Start, we don't start, stop. Stop, start, but don't finish. So finish, well, we're starting something here. We started something last week that we want to finish, and that's the red-letter challenge. We, we don't want it to be in that 92% thing, something we started either as a church or individually, and then get into it and go, oh, well, you know, I missed a day, I missed two days, missed three days, missed four days, and then we don't finish. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to uh, persevere, make sure that we, we, we go to the finish with this? Is it a matter of flexing our perseverance muscles? Of gritting our teeth and charging on? I can do this. I will persevere. Or do we need something else? Well, what is it we're trying to do? What is this all about? Let's just review. Red Letter Challenge is about the red letters, the words of Jesus. This is about putting into practice what Jesus has said, the red letters in our printed Bible, the red letters on the screen in our on online Bibles, and taking to heart the words of Jesus, what he says to us, and integrating them in our lives, putting them into practice. Now, this past week, first week of it, actually, start on, on Tuesday, was an overview, an overview of the, the five Areas, the five general areas that we're going to be looking at in, starting today in the next five weeks. And in our small groups this past week, we, we talked about not wanting to miss the mark or shoot at the wrong target. Not wanting to miss the mark, but, but hit the target. And these five targets are, are what we're, we're aiming at. Being. Being in relationship with Jesus hearing the red letters of our, our Lord that call us to be in relationship with Him. Next week, forgiving, taking to heart the incredible words of Jesus that give us forgiveness, but then letting it flow through us into forgiveness for others. Serving, our Lord came not to be served, but to serve. Well, that's for us too. We're here not to be served, but to serve and to serve one another, and to serve in our community, in our world. And then the fourth week, giving. We follow a God of grace with a generous heart beyond our comprehension. We are called also to be generous in giving. Can't be a stingy Christian. And then finally, going. Going where, where Jesus leads us, where he calls us to be his disciples and to make his disciples. We don't want to be, as we read yesterday, going on the journey but missing the adventure. I want to go where he leads us in his mission. So that's quite an undertaking. Forty days of reading and meditating on these red letters and then putting them into practice. How are we going to do it? How are we going to keep from not being the 92% that don't carry it through to finish? Well, let's look at what this first week is about, because this first week is all about how we're going to do it, being. Okay, remember last week? If you were here last week, I talked about two, two encouragements, two things to keep in mind as we go on this journey. And one of them I said, take other people with you. Don't do this alone. Take others with you. And that way we encourage each other and we, we go deeper into, into what this is all about. Take others. That's what our small groups, are, our growth groups are about. And it was neat hearing this past week feedback from growth group leaders like, hey, this is good. This is good. Group's excited about it. This is good. And just heard yesterday now that, that uh, men's Saturday morning Bible study is doing, doing Red Letter Challenge the next six weeks as well. 
We've got a lot of people doing that. If you're not in a group and you want to be in a group, it's not too late. There are still some groups with openings, and the sign-ups are on the table back there. But the other thing I said, you know, take, other, take others with you, but take Jesus with you. Take him with you. And that's what this first week is about. Being. Being in relationship with Jesus. We gotta spend some, we gotta spend some time putting into practice, thinking about my relationship with him, being with Jesus. Before we focus too much further on doing the things that he calls us to do. Because you see, you know, it's, it's, it's very simple to think that when, when there's a thing that I know I'm not doing that the Lord wants me to do, I'm not, I'm not being loving enough, I'm not being giving enough, I'm not, I'm not being compassionate enough. The, for, it's easy to think that I've got, a, I've got a doing problem. I'm just not doing it, so my answer is I've got to try harder. I got, I've got to, well, let's just, like I said, flex my perseverance muscles. I've got to grit my teeth and plow on and on my own willpower make it happen. I have a doing problem. Well, Jesus doesn't call us into that kind of relationship where we just grit our teeth. He calls us into being with him. And so more often than not, it's not really a doing problem. It's a being problem. And behind it is, am I spending time with Jesus? Am I in his word? Am I devoting myself to prayer? Am I making a priority of worship and being with my brothers and sisters? Am I listening to them in groups and praying together? Because that's where Jesus walks with us, goes with us, gives us strength, gives us the ability to do the things he calls us to do. I heard that beautifully. What Pastor Mark just read from John 15. John 15, 1 to 8. Jesus just lays this out so clearly. Verse 5, let's read it together. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, we should really resonate with this right now. I mean, harvest is going full bore all around us, okay? Uh, Vines with fruit. Fruit being picked off, looking forward to, to, to making wine. Okay. Well, you know, a number of months ago, early spring, workers are going through the vineyards and, and pruning branches. Now, all those branches that were pruned, how, how many grapes did they produce this fall? Okay. Or even just, let's go back a few months ago. Let's go, a few, let's go back to July. Let's say for some reason a branch on a vine... It has leaves, it looks healthy, even buds and so forth, and it gets separated from the vine. How much are you going to harvest from that branch? Then why do we think we can do this spiritually? You know, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Before you can think about doing, there needs to be being. Connected. Remaining in me, he says. Other versions say, abide in me. I like that word. Dwell in me. Be, being in me. It's not just trying harder. It's not a matter of more effort. It's more Jesus. Have you ever watched rowing? Anybody participate in rowing? Okay, Florencia, yes, okay, all right. Okay, rowing, competition, right? To do what? Get across the finish line, like any kind of race, same old goal, to be the fastest, to get down the, the whatever the body of water is and be the fastest, okay? But rowing, as I understand it, is different than a lot of other racing sports. Typically, you're focused on the finish line, your eyes are on the prize, eyes on the finish line, and you're coming around that bend toward the finish line. There's the tape, and you're running full bore. You're going to cross that finish line. Well, in rowing, the rowers aren't looking at the finish line. In fact, their back is to it. Now, think about that. Their back is to the finish line. 
But there's one person on the boat who is looking at the finish line, and that's the coxswain or cox, acting as a conductor or captain or leader. And how well this crew is going to do is really it's a lot about the relationship of the rowers to the coxswain, the captain. I think it's a great picture of what we're talking about here. Because, you know, we go through life, as we're going through life, we can't always see the finish line. Sometimes we don't even know what direction we're going. But we can keep our eyes where they belong. And that's described in Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Can we read this together? Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What's the writer saying here? Fix our eyes on Jesus. That's, that's the ticket. That's the key. That's how we do this. And that's how we're going to do Red Letter Challenge. That's how we do discipleship. That's how we do life as a Christian. This is being. Being in relationship with him. It's fixing our eyes on him. Okay, what are we going to do this week? What is our Red Letter Challenge for this week? Because up till now... We have the five days that are an overview, as you've been, been reading, five days of an overview of the five different areas. But today, today we start for real under the heading of being with a challenge. What are they this week? Well, I'll give you a preview. I know some of you have read ahead, but that's okay. But here's the preview. Here's today. Let's say it together. Abide in my word. Okay, what a great, perfect place to start, being in the word. The challenge will be to be in the word. And the next one, let's say it together, pray earnestly. Of course, goes right along with the word, is being in prayer. The next one, worship the Lord your God. Of course, remaining with Jesus by worshiping him wherever we are. Together, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Yeah, rest is important. Resting in Jesus is very important. Next one, together. And when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Ooh, we're going to talk about fasting. Hmm, that ought to be interesting here in the Napa Valley, the land of food and wine. Okay, but maybe we need to hear this and what it means and what it says to us about remaining in Jesus. Oh, good, the next one. Let us eat and celebrate. <laughs> well, what's, what's this about? How's, how's this being with Jesus? You'll find out. Okay, and then finally, together, the Sabbath was made for man, keeping the Sabbath. So there's our challenges for the week. As we go through them, read them, and then each day, let's put this into practice. Let's just not read it. Let's just not study it. Let's just not pray about it. Let's do it. Okay. That's what this is about. What this is all about is really this week being, it's about priority. It's about making real what we might easily say is our priority. What would we say is our priority? We, we, it's like confessing the creed of what we believe when we say we believe, we're not just saying that we intellectually acknowledge the existence of God. We're saying, you're my God. And to say you're my God means you're first. You're first. Okay. But we may need to make it real. This week is about that. Being and putting being with Jesus as priority. And we know that's what we should do. We know that's what we're called to. We know that's the essence of, of faith, and that's a fulfilling of the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. But why is it so easy that time with God is the first thing that gets cut? When our schedules get tight, or other things come up, or things that we, opportunities, things to do, and time with God gets cut. 
time in his word, dedication to prayer, faithfulness and worship, being with other Christians in a study or a group. I mean, wouldn't it make sense if this is really truly our priority? Being with the Lord in these ways would be the first thing on our schedule and the last thing to get cut. So this week is challenging us this way. To be with Jesus. Priority. I find it interesting and at times a little disturbing that one of the recent um, OS upgrades of this little crazy device phone will now tell me how much time I spent that week staring at the screen. And if I looked a little further, which, which apps I was looking at for as long as I was. I thought it was really cool when it came out. I don't think it's so cool now. <laughs> um, wouldn't it be kind of cool to have an, have an app, have a kind of meter that tells you uh, how much time you spent with the Lord? How much you devoted to being with Jesus. And then I could see if it really is the priority that I say it is. Because when we make it a priority, when we be with Jesus, when we follow these red letters of Jesus, we're walking with him. That's where our strength is. That's where our forgiveness is. That's where his grace is. That's where his spirit is. And that's where we have the, the, his power, his work in us to do what he calls us to do. Isaiah 40, verse 30 and 31. By the way, 40, 31 is our school theme verse. Go Eagles. But uh, let's read this together. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That's what this week is about, putting our hope in the Lord. Our hope in the Lord through being with Him. And then we find it isn't really about us at all completing and finishing. It's Him. And God finishes what He starts. Philippians 1.6. Let's say it together. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion today of our Lord Jesus. And I pray that God would bless each of us and carry his work on to completion in us. Red letter challenge, the week of being. May God bless it and bless each of us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you love us, and that's incomprehensible to us at times. You love us, and you want to be with us in our presence, in our minds, in our hearts, in our lives, in our workplaces, in our homes, in our, in our cars, wherever we are. You want to be with us. Lord, open our eyes to this and move our hearts to say, yes, Lord, come along with me. Be with me at the beginning of day, at the end of day, throughout the day in your word, in prayer, in fellowship, in worship, in all these ways. So bless, Lord, as we bless us and lead us in our time with you. And we hear your voice and we follow. In Jesus' name, amen.